G'day guys and welcome back to the Venture Beyond podcast. This is episode 10. Yes, we've reached those double digits. In this episode, we talk all about our latest venture, Extra Clubs, which is in health and wellness, very different to our normal ventures in software. The message of this podcast is all about understanding the things you need to learn in order to launch a new business and being comfortable not knowing every answer. We have brought heaps of new people into this project and we've learned a heap that you're going to get a lot of value out of. I think you're going to love it. Okay, so it's been a pretty intense few months since we've been on the pod. It's been a while. It uh, has been truly venturing beyond. Beyond into a place where I have, we have no experience. Um, off the back of a what we think is a stellar idea, the concept is super strong. But uh, it's in wellness, which is far beyond our field of expertise. Um, do you want to tell the audience all about what Extra Clubs is? I think it's uh, it's worth worth saying what it's been. How many months since we did the last one? Uh, five, something like that. Four or five. Five months. We've started one new business. You've dropped about 20 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> I've dropped 17 kilos today. Yeah. It's good to be back. Um, but yeah, Extra Clubs is a going to be a chain of wellness centers. The idea is unlimited at any time, sauna, ice and steam, starting at twenty three ninety five per week. So that's pretty much it. What we, what we saw is that the wellness centers of today kind of fall into two buckets being either private session bookings, which are usually really unaffordable, uh, you know, starting it from one, $1 per minute. I think it was $1.10 per minute was the average that we, we researched and we found that that was the average across all the uh, sauna places in Sydney to use a sauna. So if you want to use it for 60 minutes, it costs 66 bucks, which is a lot of money. I don't know if like, I don't have the money to spend sixty six dollars each week to go use a sauna, but I'd love to use a sauna more than once a week. Uh, so the the buckets are that p- private single session bookings, and then you've got the uh, the saunas that are inside gym facilities that are usually poorly maintained and not very high quality. And so we're trying to bring high quality saunas that are uh, much more affordable, practically. Yeah, exactly. Now the ev- evolution of the original idea. The original idea was very much at at its core the membership piece the 24 7 convenience and it came from a place of not really from a wellness uh, angle it really came from a it did a little bit but it it really came from the the desire to want to be able to sauna regularly and while there's health benefits to that and and everybody knows them now i think it's the one of the biggest trends on on socials at the minute it wasn't um it wasn't inspired at, at this particular point. The way we've crystallized that, the overarching uni, uh, unique selling proposition was not what it was originally. And the theme of this, what we want to talk about today is what we is finding out what we didn't know and how we came to all the conclusions that we've now come to in order to be what we think is close to somewhat expert in, in the experience. It's probably a shitload we still don't know though, that's for sure. Yeah. But there's definitely been a massive journey to get to where we are, where we literally knew nothing and were babies and we still are probably infants, but we're we're growing up by doing a lot of hard work. It's personified, I think, a little bit by the fact that when I came up with the idea and we started workshopping it, I didn't even know what what the word or the phrase contrast therapy meant. And as it turns out, we're building this incredible contrast therapy uh, experience that is going to enable you to add sauna ice and steam to your regular health routine which is what you should be doing and that is a catchphrase of ours by the way I had to slip it in there well contrast therapy itself is super young as well not many people know what it is for sure it feels like stumbling upon it and then opening up pandora's box about who are the experts in the place uh, in the space rather who's talking about the health benefits why are they talking about it what are the intricacies of those health benefits that we can then put into our user experience and therefore design a whole build around, you know? Um, and one of the ones is Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who, who talks very much about sauna, uh, health health benefits when you go regularly. Yeah, so it's, it's I said 60 minutes before because Dr. Rhonda Patrick studied, she studied a, group, a large group of people for 20 years 
all different ages and using sauna um, at different frequencies um, throughout the week. So like some people would use it once a week, some four, four times a week. And what she found was the optimal amount of times is four times a week for 15 minute sessions. And it, it, uh, it results in a 40% decrease in all cause mortality. So your chance of dying of any kind of, you know, heart yeah, heart disease, cancers, like all of those main diseases that, that take lives. I think cancer is about was like 30% or something like that decrease and heart disease it's a bit more so obviously I mean whichever way you cut it 40% decrease is massive for me over this period of especially my wellness journey being the fact that look I I mean if you hold up a a picture of me in the the last episode I was just starting but the episode before that I think I look at myself you know six months ago seven months ago and I'm like that guy needs help (laughs) and Part of that was uh, finding answers to what would work for me uh, in terms of my regular health routine. And one of the things I really wanted to do, which sparked the original idea, was sauna and now ice bath. Originally, I didn't think about ice bath at all. But uh, having now done many ice baths and, and seeing that and feeling that benefit, I mean, just the the literal euphoria you have and like, brain firing and just everything going hard right after. And I realize now that the double entendre of what I just said, but <laughs> everything really firing like incredibly well after you get out of the ice bath is, um, is something that continued to motivate me as I was going through this journey. And then uh, as we've been designing the space, it's, it's informed our decision-making. I think it's been, it's been one of those things where we're really conscious of the, uh, contrast therapy routines the, the 15 yeah. minutes in the sauna the three minutes in the bath and so on it's been so important to practice it as we've been trying to discover or create the business like I, I was going to the sauna really frequently icebergs I still do even though the sauna there kind of sucks sorry um, but it's we've also then gone to a bunch of competitors like almost all of the competitors I'd say city cave soak you know you name it we've we've been there now to, to see what they're doing well and what they're doing, they could be doing better. And and without that, without the real, it's so illuminating when you go and you're creating a new business and you go to the competitor and you sit in the sauna and you start like tapping the roof and being like, what's the roof made out of? And like, I don't know, just like all these little intricacies of, of design that actually make a massive difference. And for creating a business, like what we're trying to create, where it's a template that we can roll out across many locations. I think doing that, that that work the groundwork like actually going there is so informative it's something we tell our clients all the time you know somebody will come in especially entrepreneurs come in with a grand vision of the future and it's come from a a place deep inside of them something that is that you can't put your finger on and this is exactly the, the extra story you know it came from a place i have no idea how it hit me but then everything else we've done from there is actually following our own advice and, and following it really well. And the thing that I, we have to emphasize for all of our clients and also for anybody listening is the fact that if you don't go and see your competitors, if you don't go and touch the product, let's say, let's say you're doing something in e-commerce and you don't go and buy every product that you can find that is comparable, then you're going to make missteps. It's as simple as that. Yeah, it's the easiest way to just kind of jump over a bunch of hurdles. I mean, there's still going to be a shitload more, but if you go and feel the, you, know, you experience the product and and you understand why they've designed things the, the way they have, you can't get it online. You can't you can't do it by like just like reading their website. You know, you know like looking at images. You really need to be there to to answer those questions. Yeah, because I mean, the the companies that are selling those competitor products are going to tell you the best things about it. You're going to then witness it as a customer and experience the worst things or potentially the biggest gaps because it's not necessarily always a bad experience. It could just be something missing that you can add to it, which probably is a good segue into what we think is missing and what we're adding into extra. And we're obviously as you know, tech people that we are and you know, very, uh, very software focused, we are putting a lot of tech into this experience. And before we talk about the specifics, we are being conscious of the fact that in a wellness space, we don't want to be connected to technology. But what we do want to, like in the sense that we don't want to be in a sauna holding a phone, but we want the tech to make the experience so incredibly seamless 
and so unique that it builds a moat around the business and it becomes that I keep saying to our team always uh, I talk about the the Apple experience you know the Apple ecosystem the walled garden once you get into Apple we want that to be for we want extra clubs to have that element to it which is exciting because in the health and wellness industry it doesn't it really exists and like I think I think a lot of people get starting in business at least I'll, I'll talk for myself but uh, I believe this because it, it does affect me is when they and we've heard a bunch of clients come to us before who want to start something new but then they're like oh but then there's that competitor already doing it like someone's already done it it's like yeah dude there's going to always be hundreds of competitors doing what you're doing i think it's like for me getting into this and, and every day like even today we found out that there's a big chain of gyms supposedly doing a lot of wellness centers that they're going to be opening up 100 over the next year or some shit like that don't know the, the details but that's what we've just been told by a, a steam generator guy uh that there will be competitors they the marketplace if there is demand will have many different brands trying to do something great but if you can create something in your brand that is a combination of excellent experience you know positioned perfectly for for who your end user is that you'll create a, a product a, a brand that's long lasting yeah and connect with them on on that more on that deeper level because like we, we were talking about yes it, it kind of is it feels earth shattering when you hear that somebody else is entering the space but it does two things it it uh, validates demand without a doubt it's like if if a big company is going to invest in a space it means that they've done the research they've probably put enough time and effort into saying that 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 demand needs to be satisfied so they're going to go after it we're already there. We're almost we're almost opened in a sense. We're almost we're, we've got we've got everything in place now to be open before them, and that should give us some confidence. But at the same time, the things that we were concerned about, like were, are we going to sell enough memberships, to me now becomes not even a th- not even a thought, because if they're going to open a hundred stores and they've already sold some tens number, or fifty or something like that, then it means that there's enough investment in the space that this is going to be big. But what we need to make sure we do is knowing that we're going to get a incumbent come into this space is execute on the things we care, we know people will care about um, and then try to satisfy that in the long run with, with great continued experience. And we've got a unique position to do that because we're not from the health and wellness space. And I think that's, that's how I kind of started there was that, we spoke with the, the CEO of a, of a large gym chain. And the first thing he said to us when we got on that call, you remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. was uh, just last week, I was talking about how this part of the industry needs to be shaken up and how it needs to be done by somebody from outside of the industry. Yeah. And I mean, that's super um, comforting to hear. He almost basically said, you are the guys to do this. But he didn't really, but you know, it does, it doesn't fill you with the kind of confidence, especially considering the person, right? Like obviously for the sake of privacy, we shouldn't say who it is, but it, it, it was a very weighty opinion. Yeah. It's a guy who knows yeah, exactly. it was in the industry. Anyway, I mean, look, we got to execute, right? Yeah. Now we got to execute. And what, what we're executing on, I think, you know, one thing I, I do want to talk about is your experience in, um, in, Finland and what you found, what you learned about sauna and because James was, I guess the timing was perfect where you already had a Europe trip booked. So you diverted your attention to becoming a sauna god. I went to Helsinki, uh, which is obviously the capital of, of traditional sort of sauna. Finland is, Finland and Russia are the two birthplaces of sauna. In Finland, uh, there's some crazy stat like this. There's a there's a sauna for there's more than a sauna for every person in Finland or something like that. <laughs> My Airbnb had a sauna in it. I'm like, what? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I went there for two days and just did as much sauna. I did five hours of sauna in 48 hours or something less than that. Uh, I met a lot of people along the way and, and learned a lot of 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 um, important lessons. Small details though, right? Like, <clears throat> you know, how how do they keep the change rooms from you know not having a gross like little bit of puddle that, so that when you're putting your shoes on your feet are all wet or like uh, how do they make sh- you know why isn't the door sealed you know like every sauna I've been to in Australia the door is sealed so people are like icebergs especially 
they're, they're opening the door, trying to get in as quick, and then slamming the door shut so that no like cold air gets in. But then in Finland, you go there, and it's like cold place. They've got a sauna on the water, and there's a gap at the bottom of the door. So like you know, seeing those things and then inquiring about it, I think is really important. I, I met, um, uh, God, I've forgotten his name now, um, but he's the one of the owners of um, a sauna in in Helsinki, and he. Um, and he is being called like the sauna lord of, of Helsinki because he's owned saunas for, for many, many years. And we had like an hour long conversation just talking about what it's like to run a sauna and just talking through some of his recommendations. And he put me onto this book that's called The, the Principles of Finnish Sauna Design. And, and through that book, I learned about ventilation and learned about, you know, these really important, like uh, really important um, principles of building a sauna that unless you are unless you know, you don't do. And if you look at in Australia, 95% of saunas aren't built with these principles in mind. And that's why you go to some saunas, a large majority of them, you sit at the top, the top tier of the, of the seating and you get suffocated, literally, because the hot air rises, the oxygen falls, and you're just sitting there like going, like suffocating. And you just think, oh, it's really hot, that's why. But no, that's just a poorly built sauna. Exactly. And since we've found a great provider who... Uh is Estonian and obviously very aligned to that, that culture, has come here from, from Estonia and has set up a company that is specifically around sauna and uh, has introduced us to a set of products and, a, and, and essentially a way of delivering this sauna in a way that brings all of the best of what you saw to Australia. But tying that back to the kind of key message of this po- podcast, right? Finding out what you don't know, I think what we're saying even though I went and did that, and then we find cat, we find the guys who are building our sauna, that Estonian, then you'll speak to somebody else. Like today, I spoke to somebody else who was talking to me about his approach to, to building saunas and, and, the, and the heaters that he uses and the steam generators he uses. And he's, he's almost, he was almost saying that Casper and the guys that were, are going to build our sauna don't know about these specific details. So it's, I think what I'm, what I'm trying to say is this, when you're starting a new business in a space you don't know, you got to do a lot of work to figure out, you know, to find out the truth, at least the truth as you see it. Yeah. And there's going to be a million different inputs and different opinions kind of pushing you in different directions. And at the end of the day, it's about like trying to assess them and just go with your gut on what feels right. Because otherwise, you just you, you sit there and it's impossible, impossible to, to decide. Yeah, and you know, as you were telling that again, it reminded me of a, of a lesson I learned from... Um, the only boss that I ever had at uh, Smorgan Group. And uh, it was the, the comment that he made about, about accountants and lawyers and, and professional services that he employed to help with strategy and implementation and all of that kind of thing in, in, the, in their businesses. He always said, you know, listen, listen to your accountant, listen to your lawyer, but don't let them run the business. And that's the same thing here is, is that with respect to sauna design, we're going to take all the inputs – we're going to listen to them deeply. And then once we're fully informed, then we make a decision. If we, cause I, and I've, t- I've said this to you last week, I think, uh, you know, I was reflecting on how this business, I don't think I could, I couldn't imagine doing a good job of it on my own. And that's also why we brought in partners, which we haven't talked about and we should. But in particular, the point was, is that I think if I was trying to do this on my own, on reflection, I would have been able to do it but not effectively, right? I would have taken a lot of opinion from one or two people because that's so that's as many inputs as I possibly could take, yeah. and then only made a decision on very a very limited set of information. You need great sounding boards. I like power to anybody who can do this by themselves. It yeah. seems extremely complicated yeah. to to do it solo. And what what we're doing here is not only just being in wellness for the first time, but we're also building a site for the first time. Yeah, construction's a yeah. bitch. And we brought on partners that have been, I would say, experienced, not expert, but experienced in the space. And um, we have a founding partner, Simon. Shout out to Sai. He, ha- he would hate that I just called him Simon. Um, but he has been influential in helping us um, get this project moving um, and all the crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Um, and we are, we've got someone in partnerships who's reaching out to... to other wellness companies to sell memberships on our behalf. 
We also got investors early on. And I think just quickly on, on our ability to bring these partners and investors in, I think something that's been illuminating for me in this process of Extra is the response that we've had is so uh, overwhelmingly significant comparatively to any other business that we've done because the other businesses have been on you know digital products it's not that exciting but i think what's amazing about extra is that like really it creates an, a, a strong reaction which means that we've been able to bring on board you know smart talented people that just want to be along for the journey you know we told the story really well too to have been able to sell equity in the company very limited amount of equity in the company at the dollar valuation that we did it also validated that our concept was so strong you know, like if, it, if you can tell somebody, we had pitches where we pitched and won the, and won the, the investment in the meeting. Yeah. That shouldn't happen, right? It, well, I mean, it's great that it did. And it's, and it's also a testament to the fact that we were so prepared going in. You know, we had detailed financial models. We had a great pitch deck, all of that. And this wasn't our first attempt at, at raising. But uh, the concept was so strong and the need for that concept was so quickly identified yeah. through the story that it really gave us a springboard because really this idea was this idea started in February and we're going to be open in February as long as everything continues to go well. So on that note, I think we have learned a lot, um, but we've made, we've pushed ourselves to learn a heap. Um, We are conscious. We have been conscious from the beginning about being aware of the fact that we don't know everything, having the humility to, to say that, um, but not only just say it, but then put it into action has been has been a strength I've seen of ours. And I also think we uh, are poised to, to make the most of it, but we still are going to run into a heap of question marks. And I think the, the key message is, is being comfortable with it and being okay with it and, and just embracing it and being like, being some days really deflated, but, being having, but knowing that that deflation is going to lead you to elation later. Yeah, actually, there's there's one more little key with this that I I, I said once to to Blue who, who was asking about how 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 this is all happening, uh, how how we're making sure that we're getting the best result, and I think the thing that for me has hit hard is that whenever something smells like it needs attention or smells a bit off, you have to just push so hard down that path, because if it, if it's a bit funky, you're not 100 percent. The answer is not 100 percent clear. It's like, you know, someone's like, oh, yeah, we're going to do this thing. Um, and then you ask a question and they're like, oh, yeah, just that. And it's not a convincing answer. You got to just like, you can't be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Because that's in my name. My nature is always like trust. I'm like, that's cool. I'll just trust you. Yeah. But if you can't, you just you just got to go deeper. So true. I mean, we're doing that right now for infrared and for, soul, and for steam. Yeah. Going as deep as possible and, and ruffling some feathers in, on, along the way because people will, will look at you and be like, why are you questioning me? As long as you do it politely, there's a way to do it. There is a way to do it. Exactly. Anyway, I think we've got to wrap it up. We better tell these people where to find us. Extraclubs.au. Check us out. We'd love to see you at the venue.